Hello, hello, and welcome to the Introverted Manager. Today I will be talking about ultimate day table, the only day table that you will need for your Power BI report, which will allow you to slice your report in many, many dimensions. Do you want custom fiscal year? It can do that. Do you want to slice by offset, minus 10 days, plus 30 days? It can do that too. Do you want to slice by months to date or quarter to date? It can do that too. So let's dive right in. Let's have a look how the day table will look like at the end, what you will get, and then we'll walk through the code to make it. So first field, of course, the base field is date. Then we get year, start of the year, end of the year, months number, start of the months, end of the months, days in the months, day, day name, day of the week, day of the year, month's name, quarter, start of quarter, end of quarter, week of the year, week of months, start of the week, end of the week, fiscal year, fiscal quarter number, fiscal months, this is important for organizations that do not align their fiscal year with calendar year, which happens pretty often. And then you also get uh, fields for filtering. Current fiscal year. So if you want to fill, get the days just for current fiscal year, you can do that. If you want to get the dates for current year, you can do that too or current quarter, or current months, or current week. Or maybe you want to get the dates just for current months to date, or quarter to date, means starting from, uh, from quarter start until today, or year to date, which is often used for reporting in organizations, specifically for financial reporting and offsets, day offset, months offset, year offset, quarter offset, which you can use to, to get dynamic calculations, last 30 days, next 30 days, and so on. This is really useful to filter your data by different dimensions. Let's have a look at the code. First, what I'm starting with is defining some constants that will be used across the code. Today's date, which is quite typical. From year to year, this is the range that our day table will be generated for between 2022 or 2024. In the end of the video, I will show you how just this table to be dynamic and actually base those from two on your actual data, on some field in your data. So it's always generates dynamically. And once your data expands, your day table expands too. Start of fiscal year. That's where you define which month is the start month for your fiscal year. In the company I'm currently working for, it's October. So fiscal year starts in October. That's why it's defined to 10. First day of the week for US based companies, it might be Sunday. If you're in Europe, it's probably Monday. That's where I am based. So Monday. Then I am getting current fiscal year start, specific date, which will be used later on in the code. If today is more than start of the fiscal year, if today's date is more than October, then it's current fiscal year. If it's less than 10, it's previous fiscal year. Let's move on to this section. And here it actually generates first table with date column, which starts at the beginning of the 
2022, in our case, and ends on 31st of December of 2024. You actually might want to adjust that to fiscal year. It could be useful in some cases. In that case, you will need to change this code to align it with fiscal year. Let's move on. Once we do that, there are some conversions, which are quite typical, renaming, etc. This is where I'm starting to add different dimensions to this day table. Namely, year, which uses standard M functions. Date year, date start of year, date end of year, date months, start of months, end of months, days in a month, specific day, day of the week name, day of week, all using standard M functions with customization for our first day of the week. Day of year, month's name, quarter of year, etc. and so on and so on and so on. Those are standard functions, so I don't want to dive in deeper into that. The important thing is that it's customized to account for your first day of the week, which will be different again for different countries, different continents. Then the interesting part starts. Fiscal year, which is a custom logic to account for fiscal years that do not align with calendar year. Namely, first, I calculate base index. 13 minus an hour start of fiscal year. In our case, fiscal year starts on October 10, which means our month's index that will be used for fiscal calculations is 3. Then there is a check, just in case, that value is within bounds, certain bounds. If it's not, it just nullifies it. If it does, it just uses the number that is provided. Then I'm adding temporary column that will I will be basing my further calculations of from. Temp fiscal base date column, which increments current date and adds three months in this case on top to account for fiscal year. And then based on that field, temporary field, I add fiscal year, fiscal quarter, fiscal months. As you can see, again, using standard M functions, but instead of basing it off date field, which is calendar, which is aligned with calendar, I'm using that temporary field I just made, which is increment, incremented by three. And once we're finished with that, I delete that fiscal base date field. Let's move on. What I'm doing after is I'm adding current fiscal year for further filtering if you want to get dates for current fiscal year. If our dates is within certain limits, then it assigns one and therefore you can filter using that field. Otherwise, zero. And I'm doing the same for current calendar months, current calendar quarter, and a year, and current week. And then additionally, I'm adding MTD, QTD, and U2D. Again, I'm using standard 
M functionality or standard date functions. Start of month, start of quarter, start of year. And if it falls within that range, then assign one or zero if it doesn't. And offsets are based on duration calculation. Again, using standard M, M functions. So I'm adding temporary column called H, which is calculated as date minus today. So if it's in the past, it will, it will be negative. If it's in the future, it will be positive. And I'm transforming it into duration. So it displayed in days. Calculating day of set was quite straightforward. With months, it's a bit more complicated. Basically, first, what it does it, is it calculates the difference between year in the table or the row that it's currently going through and today's date. So we get different in years. And then, because we want to calculate difference in months, we multiply it by 12 to transform it into months. And then we also need to get month's difference within the year itself. So what we do is we take months, we also take current months and calculating the difference between those. With year, again, it's quite straightforward. It's just the difference between years. And then the quarter, Logic is quite similar to calculation for days. It is just instead of multiplying by 12, we're mu multiplying by four because there are four quarters in the year. And that's how we end up with this amazing date table that can slice our data in so many dimensions. Now, let's move on to how to adapt this table to be dynamic and base start and end on your data. So I'm switching to the second example that I prepared. And as you can see here, or actually let me show you here. This one starts in 2010 and ends in 2012 based on my data. Data is a AdventureWorks database that I connected just for the sake of this example which has internet sales transactions, and we will be basing our date table on order date field. First, what you would like to do is specify the table that you will be using to calculate the start and end date. Once you do that, there are two constants, mean date and max date, all based on that field that I showed you, order date. It's just, in one case, it finds the minimum date. In another case, it finds the maximum date. And then, from those two dates, we transform them into a year. So, 2012, 2014. Let's move on. From year and to year is using those variables or constants depending. The further logic is quite similar to the table that I showed you before. There are no other changes. So basically, to adapt it to be dynamic, all you need to do is specify the table, specify the column that you want to base it on, and then the rest happens automatically. It will find the minimum year, it will find the maximum year, and then later, it will change or it will start the table at the beginning of the year that it finds and at the end of the year that it finds as well, maximum year that it finds. That's all you need to adapt it in to be dynamic. Once you finish with that, you need to establish a relationship with your data. 
to be able to slice your data using that day table. Here, as you can see, I have two day tables. Don't do that in your case. It's not good. Again, for the sake of example, as you can see here, I have date connected to order date, the same field that we're using to find min and max. And therefore, I can now slice my sales using different dimensions from the table. Let's try some example. Let's put order date, tax amount, unit price. Here we have, here we see all the data, but for example, I want to slice it by, let's do months to date. Oh no, months to date will not work because the data is in the, in the past. Let's do day of week. And let's switch to basic and let's do Tuesdays, for example. And we get Tuesdays. We can add day name. And we see it's Tuesday. In the same way, we can do fiscal months. Second fiscal months, which will be in our case, November. And we can see the data is filtered correctly to November. And there are so many possibilities with that date table. So I hope you will find it useful. And that's all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next one. Thank you.